Hey friends, we continue through the New Testament together. We're in Hebrews. Today we're in chapter 8. And as we've been going through these chapters, the writer or the preacher is building on some thoughts. He's talked about how we have Melchizedek as a high priest and king, and we've seen that example in the Old Testament. Well, now we have our new Melchizedek. It's Jesus, who is both our king, and our Lord, and then our Savior, our high priest. And then he goes into chapter 8. Chapter 8 is an interesting, very Jewish conversation about covenant. Covenant is the way God works to share his promises with us by binding himself as God to a promise that is shared with us. So in it's interesting how this works. A contract is between two people. We agree what we're going to do. But a covenant is is between two people with a third party who's the authority over those two to seal that promise. So you're promising to the third party on behalf of the contract or the uh, person that you're making the agreement with. So God serves as both the promiser as well as the authority over the promise. And that's called a covenant. You only have a covenant in two ways. One is the promise between you and God that he supervises him over himself. And then the other is a promise between a man and a woman, covenant relationship in marriage that God supervises as well. So here in this text, we were talking a lot about covenant and he explains how when a new high priest takes charge, there's always a new covenant with it. So every time a new high priest would take over, there would be this Sabbath rest and there would be a return of people to their original homelands or home areas. There would be a transfer back of land. A new covenant meant a new, a new high priest would mean a new covenant. Well, in this case, with Jesus being our new high priest, there is a new covenant as well, and it's permanent. It's forever. There doesn't need to be another covenant, another new law, another another Mount Sinai, another sacrifice of a Savior, because we have now the high priest that lives forever. And with that, God fulfills, gives us a new promise, a new covenant commitment between all of us. And that's written actually in Jeremiah, but then brought back by Jesus when he implements it. So the verse I chose is chapter 8, verse 10, where it says, this is a new covenant I will establish, God says. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God and they will be my people. God is promising that we no longer have to keep a list of laws to make him happy. We have to have a relationship with him to make him happy. It, it's not a religion where a legal system tells us whether we're perfect or not and worthy of entering the presence of God or fulfilling our covenant to him. No. You fulfill your covenant to him by having a relationship with him. And by doing so, he gives you, in return, his behavioral direction. He puts the laws in your mind and your heart instead of a list on a set of rock tablets. <laughs> How crazy would that have been for Jewish people that had been born and raised for centuries generation after generation to say that in order to please God and keep our covenant with him, we got to follow these 10 rules. How different for all of us. Realize what God is doing with through Jesus. He's reminding us that we no longer live by a religion. We live by a relationship. Jesus had been saying that all through his ministry. God had been saying that all through his time with the Israelites that he loved them enough to rescue them. Now, because there's a relationship between Yahweh and the people, here are the ways you ought to behave. Think of it this way. Because parents have a relationship with their kids, because of all the investment and love they have poured into their children, the rules of the house should be followed out of respect for that love. The reason we have rules to follow in in Christianity is because we love Jesus and we want to please him out of our relationship with him. So God is saying that again. Jesus is confirming that with the covenant. God confirms the covenant takes place and Jesus fulfills it by giving us salvation while we build a relationship with him. 
That's the point here, and that's why that verse is so powerful. This is the new covenant I will establish. Jesus has finished or fulfilled the Old Testament covenant. We now live under a new one, to love others the way Jesus loves us. To love Jesus by loving everybody else around us. Jesus confirmed that on the last night at the Last Supper, a new covenant I give you, love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. He confirms it on the cross. And then he follows through with it by giving us his Holy Spirit to keep that relationship covenant alive so that we can demonstrate our love to others. Wow, that's your new covenant. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you in that. We'll see you again next time. Have a great day.